Welcome to Yamaha's Motorsports Drivetrain Theory video. This video and workbook contain basic information on how our motorsports drivetrain designs work and also provide the Yamaha technician with some handy maintenance and service tips. Drivetrains help convert engine power to useful work by transferring power from the engine to the ground, starting and stopping the flow of power, controlling direction and speed, and distributing power to drive components. The basic parts used to do these jobs and their primary functions are gears, chains, belts, or shafts to transfer power between components, clutches to connect and disconnect power, transmissions to select speed and direction of operation, differentials to distribute power to the front wheels for easier steering of four-wheel drive ATVs, final drives to reduce speed and increase torque to axles, tracks and drive wheels to carry the weight of snowmobiles. Note that not all of these parts are included in each drivetrain and that functions are combined in certain applications. When choosing the parts needed to transfer power, Yamaha engineers must consider many factors including amount of power to be transferred, type of machine and normal operating conditions, distance and direction power must be moved, space available on or inside the machine. Gears are the main components in the drivetrain of most Yamaha products. They transfer power from one shaft to another and are used in transmissions, differentials, and final drives. Gears apply a twisting force called torque to rotating parts. The amount of torque applied varies with the relative gear size. For example, a small gear driving a larger gear equals less speed but more torque. A large gear driving a smaller gear equals less torque but more speed. Using this principle allows high engine power to be efficiently transferred to the drive components. For example, a small drive gear on the crankshaft is used to spin a larger driven gear on the clutch housing. This reduces the number of times the clutch housing spins relative to the crankshaft and increases engine torque. This is called the primary reduction. Because gear shafts may be used in line, parallel, or at an angle to each other, different types of gears are needed. Straight spur gears have teeth cut straight across the perimeter, parallel to the axis of rotation. These are typically used in sliding gear transmissions and primary drives. Helical spur gears have the teeth cut diagonally across the perimeter of the gear and are used in primary drive systems. Spiral bevel gears permit the power flow to change angle. The teeth are cut obliquely on the angular faces of the gears. This type of gear is widely used in the middle drives and final drives to change the angle of power flow. Chain drives use the same principles as the gear drive systems. As with gear drives, the size of the drive and driven sprockets determine the speed and torque of the driven shaft. The major differences are that the chain drive uses less moving parts and allows for more suspension travel. The drive and driven sprockets can be used to change engine torque and speed and are usually part of the final drive which is typically called the secondary reduction. A variety of chains may be used in different areas of the drivetrain. Roller chains are adaptable to a wide variety of load and operating conditions. They are made of alternating roller links and link plates that are pinned together. This allows the chain to follow the contour of the sprocket. O-ring chains are similar, but with O-rings between the link plates. O-ring chains are now commonly used for the secondary reduction because they help protect the rollers from dirt and water. The endless type does not have a master link, so the pins must be ground, cut, or pressed out in order to remove the chain. The removable type has a master link and clip, 
to hold the plate in place. Silent chains are quieter with less vibration than roller chains. They can also be operated at higher speeds. These chains use multiple plates with a channel through the center to engage with sprockets that resemble gears. Silent chains are typically used for internal transmission components such as middle and reverse drives. Belt drives also use the same principles as the gear and chain drive systems. As with gears and chains, the size of the drive and driven sprockets determines the speed and torque of the driven shaft. The cog or tooth belt provides an accurate, quiet, light, and dependable means of turning sprockets. This type of belt is mainly used on final drives. Some belt drives consist of two sheaves and a V-shaped belt. Because the V-belt is flexible, it can be used in variable transmissions where the belt diameter at each end can be changed by the primary and secondary sheaves during engine operation. Drive shafts transmit rotational power from the transmission to the final drive. A drive shaft assembly typically consists of a slip yoke, one or two universal joints, and a solid drive shaft. On four-wheel drive models, a drive shaft is used from the engine to the differential and from the differential to the wheels. In this case, CV or constant velocity joints are used. CV joints allow the drive axle to swivel into various angles. The inboard joint is normally a sliding joint to allow for length changes during suspension travel and steering action. Power flow from the engine to the drive components must be properly controlled for effective performance. Components that control power flow include clutches, transmissions, differentials, final drives. Clutches engage and disengage power between the engine and the transmission to permit the engine to run while the machine is standing still and in gear. They also make smooth starting from a standstill and gear shifting possible. There are many different kinds of clutches. Some may include features of two or more basic designs. The most common types of clutches used are friction, centrifugal, belt centrifugal, one-way cam. Friction clutches are typically wet, multi-plate types that operate in an oil spray or bath for cooling. They consist of a clutch housing, clutch boss, friction plates, metal plates, pressure plate, and a spring or springs. The crankshaft drives the clutch housing through the primary reduction gears. The friction plates are slotted to fit into the clutch housing. The metal plates and pressure plate are splined to fit the clutch boss, which is splined to the transmission main axle. When the fiber plates are forced together with the metal plates by the spring and the pressure plate, power from the crankshaft is passed through the clutch housing to the fiber plates, then on to the steel plates, and finally to the clutch boss and transmission main axle. The clutch can be disengaged in a couple of different ways. The manual method uses a lever on the handlebar to either push or pull apart the clutch plates. The inner push type uses a cable activated mechanical lever or a hydraulic activated plunger to push on a rod inside the main axle which moves the pressure plate away and allows the clutch plates to separate. The outer pull type uses a cable to rotate a shaft with a rack and pinion system. The rack pulls the pressure plate away from the clutch plates. The auto release clutch mechanism uses a shifter pedal to disengage the clutch. As the shifter pedal is depressed, a ball cam pushes on the clutch push rod and releases the clutch. Once the shift has been completed and the pedal is released, the clutch is re-engaged. Whatever type of clutch release mechanism is used, be sure that it has the specified amount of free play listed in the service manual. Another version of the friction plate clutch is the centrifugal plate clutch. 
This system consists mostly of the same components but uses engine RPM to engage and disengage the clutch. As the clutch spins faster, steel balls in the clutch housing are forced outward with centrifugal force. As the balls move out, they apply force to the pressure plate, which then pushes together the friction and metal plates engaging the clutch. When the engine RPM drops, the steel balls return to their original position and the clutch is disengaged. A centrifugal shoe clutch also uses engine RPM to engage and disengage engine power to the drive train. The shoe clutch consists of a clutch carrier and several friction shoes that are directly driven by the crankshaft and are held in place by springs on one end and a pivot on the other. The clutch drum housing is directly connected to the transmission. As engine speed increases, the shoes are forced outward and contact the drum connecting the engine to the transmission. As the engine RPM lowers, the springs overcome the centrifugal force and the shoes disengage the drum housing. In some applications, the combination of a centrifugal clutch and a friction plate clutch may be used. Another type of centrifugal clutch system is the V-belt system. This system consists of two sheaves and a V-belt. The primary sheave acts as a centrifugal clutch. As engine RPM increases, weights inside the primary sliding sheave are forced outward and move the sliding sheave toward the fixed sheave. In doing so, the V-belt is pitched between the two sheaves and power is transmitted to the secondary clutch. The one-way cam clutch is used to keep the engine engaged with the drivetrain during deceleration and consists of several cams that are caged and held in place by a spring band. This type of clutch is used between the centrifugal clutch carrier and housing. The cams are designed so that when the clutch carrier is spinning during acceleration, it is allowed to do so freely inside the clutch housing. During deceleration, the centrifugal clutch disengages from the housing to disconnect the engine from the transmission. When this occurs, the housing tries to spin faster than the carrier and wedges the outer portion of the cams against the housing to lock the carrier to the housing. The engine is once again locked to the transmission, making engine braking possible. There are two different types of transmissions, manual sliding gear, constant mesh, and automatic, constantly variable. Be aware that some may include features of both basic designs. A transmission is designed to change the vehicle's drive speed and torque in relation to engine speed and torque. Without a transmission, the engine would not develop enough power to accelerate from a standstill and reach cruising speeds. Sliding gear transmission designs consists of many different components. The input shaft or main axle is driven by the clutch. The transmission output shaft or drive axle is driven by the gears on the main axle. Both the main axle and drive axles are splined to certain gears to transmit power. There are three types of gears, the fixed gear, slider gear, and the idler gear. The fixed gear is either manufactured as part of the main axle or is splined to it. The slider gear is splined to a shaft and is designed to slide from side to side. The slider gear also has what are called gear engagement dogs. These dogs are used to engage the idler gears. Idler gears are freewheeling on the shaft until engaged by a slider gear. Whether a gear is a fixed, slider, or idler type, if it is on the main axle, it is referred to as a pinion gear. If it is on the drive axle, it is referred to as a wheel gear. The shift forks slip into a groove in the slider gears and are used to move them in the desired direction. Guides mounted in the transmission case support the forks. Some late model guides are spring-loaded or are fixed to the shift fork and actually slide in and out of the transmission case. The shift drum is used to control the movement of the shift forks. A pin in the shift fork rides in the drum's pattern grooves. 
The grooves are curved to guide the fork from side to side when the drum is rotated. The two most commonly used shift mechanisms are the pin segment type and the pawl type. The movement of the shift lever or gear selector activates the shift mechanism and rotates the shift drum. The shift detent is a spring-loaded ball, roller or pin that is used to hold the drum in place once a gear has been selected. That covers the basic parts and construction of a manual transmission. The next section will show the flow of power through a five-speed manual transmission. In neutral, all the sliding gears are located in a center position. This allows all the output shaft gears to freewheel and power is not transmitted. To get the vehicle moving from a standstill, disengage the clutch and move the shift lever into first gear. The shift mechanism rotates the shift drum and slides the fourth wheel gear over which engages the first wheel gear. When the clutch is re-engaged, power is transmitted through the main axle causing it to spin. In this example, the small 16-tooth first pinion gear on the main axle drives the large 39-tooth first wheel gear on the drive axle. From there, the power is transferred through the gear dogs on the fourth wheel gear to the spline drive axle. To find the gear ratio, divide the number of teeth on the wheel gear by the number of teeth on the pinion gear. So if we divide the 39-tooth wheel gear by the 16-tooth pinion gear, we get a first gear ratio of 2.4 to 1. This means that the main axle rotates 2.4 times to the drive axle's one rotation. This gear ratio allows the vehicle to accelerate easily. When shifted into second gear, the fourth wheel gear is slid away from the first wheel gear. At the same time, the fifth wheel gear moves over and engages the second wheel gear on the drive axle. The power now flows from the main axle through the second third pinion gear to the second wheel gear, which is locked to the drive axle by the fifth wheel gear. A gear ratio of 1.5 to 1 is produced to allow higher speeds. When shifted into third gear, second gear is disengaged and the fourth wheel gear engages with the third wheel gear. Power flows from the main axle through the second third pinion gear to the third wheel gear which is locked to the drive axle by the fourth wheel gear. A gear ratio of 1.1 to 1 is achieved and both shafts are rotating at nearly the same speed. When shifted into fourth gear, third gear is disengaged and the second third pinion gear engages with the fourth pinion gear. Power flows from the main axle through the second third pinion gear to the fourth pinion gear which rotates the fourth wheel gear that is splined to the drive axle. The gear ratio is now 0.9 to 1 and is considered an overdrive. When shifted into fifth gear, fourth gear is disengaged and the second third pinion gear engages with the fifth pinion gear. Power flows from the main axle through the second third pinion gear to the fifth pinion gear which rotates the fifth wheel gear that is splined to the drive axle. The gear ratio is now 0.7 to 1 and is also considered an overdrive. Some transmissions may also have a third shaft with an idler gear and a sliding gear or an idler gear and a sliding collar with a silent chain to reverse the output direction. 
An automatic, constantly variable transmission will choose the proper ratio to quickly move a unit from an idle to top speed. Varying the distance between the two sheaves causes the belt to ride up or down on the sheaves' conical surfaces, changing the drive ratio. The primary, or drive, sheave assembly is controlled by engine RPM. Its job is to maintain the engine RPM at maximum power output while it shifts through the ratios. There are several weights within the primary sheave assembly. As the RPM increases, centrifugal force causes the weights to slide up these ramps. This pushes the sliding sheave closer to the fixed sheave and forces the belt to climb up between the two sheave faces. The secondary, or driven sheave assembly, monitors the wheel load and adjusts the drive ratio accordingly. This allows the primary sheave assembly to maintain ideal engine RPM. Unlike the primary sliding sheave assembly that moves in a linear motion, the secondary sliding sheave changes the drive ratio by moving in a spiral motion. Guide pins and spiral grooves control the movement of the sliding sheave. As the wheel load increases and spring preload is overridden, the sliding sheave twists closer to the fixed sheave, causing the belt to shift down to a lower ratio. As the load decreases, the sliding sheave will twist away from the fixed sheave, causing the belt to shift up to a higher ratio. Now that we have covered Yamaha's transmission types, let's take a look at differentials and final drives. Differentials are primarily used on the front axles of Yamaha four-wheel drive ATVs. The use of a front differential permits each drive wheel to rotate at a different speed. It's easier to steer through a sharp turn than with a solid axle because an outside wheel must travel farther than an inside wheel. Engine power enters the differential through the pinion gear, which in turn drives the ring gear. When the ATV is moving straight ahead, the bevel pinions and gears on the drive axles all turn as a unit with the ring gear. The drive axle on each side receives equal power, so each wheel turns at the same speed. When the ATV makes a sharp turn and the inside wheel slows, the differential permits the outer wheel to rotate faster. Engine power still enters the differential through the pinion gear and drives the ring gear, but now the bevel pinions are carried around by a side gear. Because the inside wheel is rotating slower, the bevel pinions must rotate on their own axis and move around the inside wheel's side gear. Because conventional or non-limited slip differentials are at a disadvantage when encountering extremely loose traction conditions, Yamaha chose to equip all four-wheel drive ATVs with a front TCD torque control differential system or limited slip. A limited slip differential provides driving force to both front wheels at all times. It transfers a portion of the driving torque to both the slipping and the driving wheel. This helps prevent the vehicle from becoming stuck in mud or snow. The torque control differential uses a friction clutch system to transfer the driving torque to the wheels according to the load. One steel friction plate is placed on top of a conical spring and is notched to the ring gear. A second friction plate is placed on top of the first plate and is notched to a side gear. When the gear case and ring gear are bolted together, the conical spring is pressed against the steel friction plates. This pressure effect applies a load on the differential and keeps both wheels driving on loose surfaces. At the same time, the TCD system also allows some controlled slippage when making sharp turns. Some of Yamaha's late model 4x4 ATVs are equipped with an on-command four-wheel drive system. This system lets the operator shift in and out of four-wheel drive with the touch of a button. The handlebar mounted switch engages the system via a servo motor with a rack and pinion setup located near the front differential. 
The rack and pinion uses a shift fork to slide a coupling sleeve on the drive shaft to engage the pinion gear shaft. The final drive systems that Yamaha most commonly uses are gear drive, chain drive, and belt drive. The gear drive is used on motorcycles and ATVs. This final drive consists of a drive shaft, a housing, pinion gear, ring gear, bearings, and seals. Unlike the front differential, this gear drive has a live or solid axle. Chain drives are typically used for external uses between the transmission output shaft and the rear wheel or wheels. Belt drives perform the same task as chain drives but offer a couple of advantages. The belt drive requires less maintenance and needs no lubrication. The belt also makes less noise and lasts longer than a chain. The last section of this video will cover some service tips which will assist you with some drivetrain service techniques and answer some frequently asked questions. Most snap rings are constructed with a rounded edge on one side and a squared edge on the other. The snap ring should be installed with the rounded edge toward the applied force and the squared edge on the opposite side. If it is installed incorrectly, the pressure might push the snap ring out of its groove. When the snap rings are installed on a spline shaft, make sure the ends are evenly spaced between the gaps of the splines. A spinning gear is usually held in place by a circlip and shims. Any spinning gear should have between 0.08 mm to 0.13 mm side play for maximum efficiency. If there is no side play, the gear will bind up. If there is too much side play, the gear will move over when the sliding gear tries to engage it. Be sure to check all gear clearances before reassembly. Most Yamaha shift forks are marked with a number, one, two, three, or a letter, LCR, that identifies their position in the gear case. Starting from the left side to the right, the number order is one, then two, and finally three. If letters are used, L stands for left, C for center, and R for right. When installing drive chains, make sure to install the chain clip with the closed end in the direction of rotation. After adjusting a drive chain to the desired length, you're ready to tighten the rear axle. Place a screwdriver between the chain and the rear sprocket, then rotate the wheel so the screwdriver is wedged between them. This will pull the wheel forward and hold the adjusters in place. Torque the rear axle nut and tighten the adjuster bolt lock nuts. Make sure to lubricate all drivetrain axle splines and drive shafts with lightweight lithium grease. If applicable, also lube the rear wheel clutch hub pins and splines. Finally, when reassembling a transmission, be sure to bend shift through all the gears before installing the engine. This concludes our video program. Effective service and repair of drivetrain systems require a clear understanding of their operation. Yamaha customers depend on your knowledge and ability every time they bring a unit to your shop. We hope the material presented here helps you in your pursuit of total customer satisfaction.